Hello everyone! Today I'm gonna show how you can set your mill head square to the table without fancy equipment or even a dial indicator. All you need for it is the mill, the end mill or a fly cutter and that's it. So let's get straight to it. First, please be patient and let me explain some theory behind it. Remember, all this information is probably out there, but I promise you, I didn't copy it. I thought of it all by myself, no one taught me these things. So let's pretend that this is your work surface, and this is an end mill. If the mill head is at some angle less than 90 degrees relative to the work surface, and if the mill moves right to left, then it will be cutting only with its leading edge, because the trailing edge will be up in the air. This will also leave the surface slightly concave, meaning that the edges of the cut will be higher than the middle. If the mill head is at an angle more than 90 degrees, then the trailing edge of the mill will be doing the cutting. All this, of course, is reversed if the travel direction is changed. When the mill head is set square to the table, both leading and trailing edges of the end mill will be leaving a mark and will look similar to something like this. So, what we want to see in the end is cutting marks that intersect and create diamond shapes. Guys, not so common sense reminder. Safety glasses on! For this purpose, the larger the diameter of the mill, the better. I start with a 3 quarter inch square end mill. Later in the video, I'll be using a fly cutter and it makes awesome looking surface finish. At the beginning, I set the mill head to factory zero marks and start the mill. Because I'm using VFD, I have a luxury of just dialing in pretty much any RPM for the cutter, which for this application should be around this much. Um, uh, a moderate speed? Honestly, I have no idea what the speed is, but it feels like it should do the trick. I'd say my guess would be about 500 RPM. First longitudinal cut reveals that the factory zero mark is off by a little bit. I'm loosening up four jam bolts to be able to adjust the x-axis alignment angle. After a couple of adjustments, the results look pretty good. We see the intersecting marks of leading and trailing edges of the cutter. Next, it's time to apply the same techniques to the Y-axis alignment. Just like before, loosen jam bolts, adjust angle, check results. A vertical mill that is well set right on square will leave, so to speak, shadow of a previous cut when passes are overlapped in any direction. Like I promised, the fly cutter makes surface finish look much more interesting. And here we can clearly see the diamond shapes and shadow from an overlapped cut. I also must add that this method works when minimal depth of cut are used, otherwise the loads on the mill head will cause it to deflect enough to skew the results and you'd be chasing your own tail trying to find a sweet spot. If you saw something you like, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't like something, let me know in the comment section below so I could improve. Please subscribe and share to help this channel grow. I have many ideas for future projects. Please also consider supporting me. Links are in the description. 
thanks for watching and have a great day.